Hey everybody, welcome back to Family Secrets. This is unit number three on course number one, one. <laughs> the preparation of getting married. So we've already talked about how to prepare yourself personally, uh, you know, emotionally, maturity, the skill sets you need, the spiritual, uh, the things that you need to prepare yourself spiritually for. We've right. talked about seeking God and finding out that you have the right person as you're marrying the right one. So yeah, there's a confidence and a uh, security as you move forward to get right. married so we're at that step now where we're talking now we've we've found the one we prepared ourselves mm -hmm. we are coming together as a couple yeah. and now we're about to become married uh, so what's next mm -hmm. for us what's next is preparation which is this um, get pastoral counseling you get premarital counseling before you get married it's vitally important that you do that um, I'm going to let Leslie address that really quick, and then I'll, I'll jump in and add as we go. First thing we want to uh, share with you about is make sure that you have a pastor yeah. who is going to marry you. Um, it's very important that you spend time with him before the marriage, um, before the wedding day, yeah. um, because he's going to lead you and help you and, and, um, and pr make sure that you are ready to be married. Um, and he has spiritual authority in your life. Yeah. Um, when you when you go to him and ask him to perform that, he yeah. you are giving him spiritual authority in your life. It's a really important point. Yeah, it is. And as a pastor, I am a pastor. Um, let me tell you this: what I went to you and may ruffle some feathers, and I, I don't. I oh, I want to say I don't care, but I don't. Um, <laughs> you want someone who's actually a pastor. You don't want someone who's gone and spent 15, 20, 50 bucks, whatever it is, and got a nice little online certificate that said they can marry you. Uh, because they have no spiritual vested interest in your life. You want someone that's, that's going to be able to pray for you, that's going to be concerned about you, yeah. that's going to be there in your life. As a pastor, when I do a, a wedding, when I officiate a marriage, mm -hmm. um, I don't just do the wedding and then walk away and pat on the back and say, good luck, go get them, tiger. I, that's not how we operate. We keep a file yeah. of the people that we've married, and from time to time, the Lord may speak to me, or every once in a while, I'll just check on them. And see how they're doing. Uh, maybe you know, just to keep them encouraged. I'm not a uh, show up and leave pastor. Right. Um, I'm not the guy who's going to show up, get his, you know, whatever you're paying a pastor these days to do the wedding, and leave and never talk to you again. I'm going mm -hmm. to meddle in your life because I care about you enough to help you mm -hmm. have a good marriage, right. not just something that we said good luck and throw you to the wolves. Yeah. So you don't want someone who's just there to make you feel good. Mm -hmm. You want someone who's there that can speak truth to your life, right. encourage you, and love you throughout every season right. of your marriage. Because uh, if that's that $5 pastor, probably not going to get that value. Right. So we want to be sure that you get the, the full value of, of premarital counseling through pastoral counseling. Right. Go ahead. Right. Okay, so we um, you know, knew that we were it. Yeah. We were ready to get married. And so we... Um, found a pastor. Um, I say found because um, we had a friend of our family who was a pastor and we, we asked him to be the one to officiate our marriage and to do mar premarital counseling with us. Um, my dad was actually our pastor. Yeah. However, I wanted my dad to be able to enjoy the day um, and be with my mom and give me away and all that stuff in the, in the ceremony. And so we opted to have our friend uh, do the wedding for us. So Pastor John was our friend, and he was actually doing his very first wedding when he yes. did our wedding. <laughs> um, Giddy pigs. He'd been awesome. a pastor, been a pastor for quite a while, but he never had to do a wedding. And so we were it. Yeah. And so we were also it when uh, he's doing the premarital counseling with us. But he did a great job yeah. um, because he actually asked us to uh, asked us questions. He made us think. We carried in a book, a book stack, you know, huge book stack of things that we'd already read, and um, but he still knew that we needed more. We yeah. needed more. We needed to know more about each other. He wanted to make sure we weren't going to get surprised with something from a background that we didn't know about, sure. or he wanted us to know how the other responded in certain instances. So he asked us questions. He sent a big, long list of questions home with us, yeah. and we were supposed to talk about them and get back to him. Um, the next time with the answers or if any problems that come up. And so some of the questions were things like, who's going to handle the money yeah. in your relationship? Who's going to pay the bills? Um, he wanted to know, what do you do when you get angry? How do you react when you get angry? 
so he was making us explore how we dealt with feelings right. and right. that kind of thing. Um, he also wanted to know, you know, who is the spender and who's the saver in your relationship. So that's another money issue, but money's a big thing in your relationship. Huge. Also, he wanted to know if we'd had any bad relationships with the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. So, like, Brian actually had a previous engagement that did not come to marriage, um, fell, fell apart before that. Yeah. Um, but that's something he we needed to know about each other, we needed to talk about. And so that was a good question. Um, another one was um, things that might have happened in your family growing up that could affect how you relate in a relationship. Um, so he was asking us lots of questions that made us talk and made us um, think yeah. about, you know, well, how would I respond in a situation like yeah. that? Or how would I, um, what would I do yeah. in that kind of a situation? Yeah. So those are really good questions. It was a really important thing that got discussion going. And you need to be able to talk in your marriage. Yeah. If you can't communicate in your marriage, you will have lots and lots of issues. Um, communication is key. Communication is a big, big key. So discussing from the beginning is really important. Yeah. Which leads me into another thing um, where as we were doing discussion, then Brian and I ended up having lots and lots of honest conversations about things that we had done. We did not want anyone to be able to come into our marriage and say, oh, do you know what he used to do? Or do you know how she used to act? And we didn't want it right. to throw wedges right. into our relationship. So we were really... Um, Kind of almost pushing ourselves even mm -hmm. to have very honest conversations about what we had done yeah. in our past. Yeah, yeah, because like when I um, when I was younger, I knew I was called to be a pastor. Then some things happened. I ran away from my call as a pastor for a number of years. Uh, went to college, um, not to become a pastor, but to become whatever I felt like I just wanted to become at that moment. And, and I call it my stupid years. It's great. Don't hear me wrong. I love the education I got. The friends I've made there. I have some lifetime friends from that. But I, I was running from God in that time period of my life. And so I did what I call some stupid things. And, and I wasn't uh, doing all the things that I'm going to tell you you're supposed to do. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't do all those things because I, I just had been hurt through some things that happened. And then I decided I'm not going to do this God thing. I'm not going to do this ministry thing. And so I had all that in there. And so I knew the things that I had done, the things I had said, um, the actions I had taken. So I actually sat down with Leslie and I'm like, I'm just going to just be brutally honest here and tell you all the things that I was stupid about. Yeah. Yeah, for relationships, uh, the drinking, all the things that I did, it was just, you know, in retrospect, not the wisest decisions in my life. And I remember we were talking about it. She's like, why are you even telling me all this? Because I understand something. And that's how our enemy, we have an enemy, right? If we're a Christian, yeah. we have an enemy called the devil, right? And so I knew how he operated. If I'm hiding something or there's a perception that I'm hiding something from my soon-to-be spouse, my right. wife-to-be. Mm -hmm. And then I'm sitting there talking with someone. And as we're talking to them, they bring up, hey, remember when? And how did you do it? And, and then all of a sudden, how's she going to feel about all that? She needed to know everything. I think it all the gruesome details of every single thing, but she knew every person that I had ever had a relationship with. That she knew everything that I'd ever done. She knew all those things uh, because she needed to know those things so that we could start our relationship honestly right. with straight, honest conversation, mm -hmm. with straight, uh, uh, hard conversations even. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and here's, here's, here's the interesting thing. Um, we were engaged. We weren't married yet. Like we said, it took about six months to get married. Mm -hmm. And I had a friend came down to the town we were living in at the time and he was doing some work for a company yeah. and he called us and said i want to take you guys to dinner I'm like sure mm -hmm. go to dinner really close friend um and so we go to dinner and he starts telling my spouse to be the stuff that i did when we were in college because he was a friend from the stupid years <laughs> yeah yeah and and, and uh i said like really you're it was one of the, the last people i thought would do something like that and uh, I'm saying, wow. So let's excuse yourself to go to the restroom. And I finally looked at him and, and I called him by name. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing, man? And he's like, you really do love this girl. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> duh, getting married. And he's like, no, I just, he knew how I was. He didn't know how, you know, back then. He didn't know how I was then, in that moment, how much I had changed and how much God had redeemed me. 
and maybe better. He didn't know those things. Mm -hmm. So he actually, in his own mind, was protecting her from the old me. And with that in mind, it didn't seem as bad. Right. But boy, it felt bad in the moment. So you need to have those honest, uh, uh, very deep conversations in, in regards to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I had to do the same thing. I had to bear my soul, yeah. bear the things that I had been through, things I had done, things yeah. that were that were not right. Um, just everything out in the open so that there was nothing between us. Right. And we can then come together yeah. and be one. And that's what you're headed for. When you're going to get married, you're going to become one. Yeah. And that's really important to to have that air all cleared out between you, and nothing that can come up, and the enemy can use it against you. Um, Sorry about that. That's right. Um, also, then the what we want to encourage you all in is to, to be uh, pure, remain pure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you need to watch for places that are temptations for you. Um, sexually pure is what we're going to talk about first. Um, yeah. There's other things you need to be pure in, but sexually pure is an obvious one since you're going to get married, and that's kind yeah. of what it's all about. Yeah. Um, so uh, you want to avoid temptation. Avoid places where you um, might not feel like everybody's watching you, or <laughs> um, maybe you... Uh, you don't want to be at the other's apartment or at a, at a house by yourself without other people around you. Um, honestly, with our grown children even now, um, we encourage chaperones because it's just a better way to be accountable. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so don't be, don't put yourself in a position where you are tempted to do something that you don't want to do before you're married. Um, let me tell you why you shouldn't be having sex before you're married. When you get into that position with someone and you do it without a commitment and without a covenant, you are setting yourself up for failure right away. Yeah. Yeah. And let me say this. You're not married until you're married. Yes. I know it's profound. Get your notebook out. Make yeah. a note. You're not married until you're married. Right. And too many people use the, the sexuality that they have uh, to manipulate mm -hmm. to or just get pleasure from. And, and it's pleasurable. It's going to feel good mm -hmm. whether you're married or not. Right. But God can't bless it if you're not. Right. Yeah. I hope that makes sense to you. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're encouraging you to stay pure. And and I would say we're human, especially you know, a lot of people like, well, I'm a Christian. I wouldn't do that. Blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. Hogwash. I'm going to tell you right now. My hands wanted to go places they shouldn't go. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do things that I shouldn't do before I married with my wife. One, I'm highly. I'm not marrying her because I don't think she's cute. <laughs> Yeah. I'm not married her because I don't like the way she walks away from me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, right, guys? I'm not marrying her because I'm not attracted to her. I'm marrying her. Part of the reason I'm marrying her is because I am madly in love with her. Mm -hmm. And I'm physically attracted to her. Right. Yeah. You know, I want to do I want to, to, to do those things with her. But if you'll wait until that moment, it'll become a very special moment. And it'll set the right course yes, for your marriage. Absolutely. Because, it, guys, I'm going to say this right now. And, 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 and some ladies will tell you I'm wrong. I don't care what they say. I, I'm not. If you don't wait until you're married and you don't guard their honor and you don't guard their purity, mm -hmm. there will be a lingering thought that they have for the entire time you're married is, did he just marry me for it or did he marry me for me? And you want to marry her for who she is, yes. not what she can give you. Yes. And that's really, really important. So right. that's what part that plays into the purity aspect of mm -hmm. things. Um, and, and you want to be able to, to do that. You yeah. Stay pure in regards yeah. to that. Um, and, and make sure that on your um, honeymoon night, you know, the night that you get married, that when you come into physical covenant together, for the, hopefully for the very first time between the two of you, that it's something that's super special. And it'll blow your socks off. You're going to have a great time. It's going to be enjoyable. It's going to be pleasurable. But there'll be no lingering doubt. There'll be no lingering guilt. There'll be no lingering shame. It'll be pure. The Bible says that the, the marriage bed is holy. It's holy. So it's a place that, and, and when I'm talking about holy, I'm not talking about when you get ready to go to bed, angels sing, and <laughs> clouds open yeah. up, and you hear no, the voice of God, no. you can disrobe now. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm saying... It's a place of safety and security yeah. because it was done place. the right place. Mm -hmm. And and so 
Uh, you're going to have fun. You're going to enjoy yourself, but you're going to know that you did it the right way. Yeah. You think to add to that? Um, yeah. So when you are remaining pure, you're honoring God and you're honoring the other person. Yeah. And honor is a huge thing inside of a marriage. You want to honor one another, respect one another. That is a big, big issue um, that is very important to your relationship and to your oneness. Um, also, do you want to maybe tell them about... Um, what to do if they have already already missed that mark oh sure um i had missed that mark you know just being transparent with you i had already missed that mark and i let her know that um but what i had done is i repented the scriptures talks very clearly about the word repentance and that's the and all i did was ask god to forgive me and to make me new again i, I can't go back and not do the act but I repented in my heart and, and took it before the Lord mm -hmm. and even repented in prayer with my wife-to-be and apologized to her for not sharing, for not saving myself just for right. her. Uh, and so you just do that, and there's no guilt or shame in that. Because um, God's grace yeah. is able to cover all that. Absolutely. And he's able to make you freshly new yeah. all again. And Absolutely. so that when you do come together, yeah. um, it will be an awesome awesome moment once again yeah um we always encourage those who are already living together yeah. to to try to live find a way that you can live separately until the marriage yeah because that time apart is is you getting yourself ready and pure yeah. before the lord to then come together for in in your marriage yeah and you're making a commitment to one another mm -hmm. and to god as you do this and so this is a part of the premarital counseling process this is part of learning and growing and doing the things that, that you need to do so that everything you do from then on is based on that solid foundation that we've always talked about. Right, right. Um, when you get married, when as you are um, joined together, you, are, you become one flesh. The Bible calls uh, a married couple one person. You mm -hmm. become one. Um, so I'm part of him and he's part of me and we are one together. Yeah. And so we have to live our lives as one together. Yeah. Everything we do, every decision we make, it affects the other one. Yeah. Um, and so that's a really important concept to get as you're preparing for marriage. Yeah. Is that you are going to be one with someone else. Yeah, because we've been one so long that people don't say, here comes Brian, or here comes Leslie, it's, here comes Brian Leslie, or here comes the father. He's in, it's, we are so one that you cannot take our names apart anymore. Um, you know, if someone's talking to us, they're talking about Leslie and Brian, they're talking about Brian and Leslie. They're talking about us because we've become so intertwined that we've become one yeah. um, in, in, in activity. We've become one in the flesh. We've yeah. become one in spirit. we become one in direction. Yeah. we become one in purpose and goals. We've become, so it's a big deal. Yeah. The marriage is a much bigger deal. Remember we talked about in, in the first unit that it's the marriage is the mystery of God's kingdom. And yes. so it, it's kind of, when, when Jesus said, I'm the, you know, I am marrying the bride of Christ. We're going to become one mm -hmm. with Christ in yes. God's kingdom. And so we're learning right here, right now, mm -hmm. how to become one right. in the flesh so that we can learn spiritually how to become one with right. God. It's a big deal. Yes. Um, you know, so we have one flesh. And what that creates is a covenant, mm -hmm. not a contract. Right. A covenant. Contracts yes. can be broken. Right. Covenants cannot. Right. Um, covenants are not broken, and, 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 they're, and they're, they're not. It, cause they're it, binding. Yeah. They're binding eternally, usually. Yeah. Um, and so that's what you that's what you're entering into is that covenant relationship where yeah. you are you are under God's authority and yeah. under His blessing as you are one together and you remain one together. Um, it's a good thing. It's a great thing. It's a good thing. And, and so here's the, here's the cool part. You know, we talk about being an unbreakable marriage, so you can be an unbreakable family. Because now, if you learn how to have covenant one with another mm -hmm. as a husband and a wife, yeah. you can learn how to have covenant with your children as you raise them up. Right. So that you become unbreakable. Yes. Not because you don't have emotion, not because you don't argue, not because you don't have disagreements, right. but because you've created a covenant that stands over time with each other. Yes. So we hope you got some value out of, out of this particular unit. Yes. This is the end of course number one. I'm preparing for marriage because we just got you to the point of marriage, right? Mm -hmm. yep. We talked about you know, actually getting married, becoming one, and creating that covenant. Uh, so we look forward to talking to you in course number two. Yes. And we'll, and we'll see you there as we talk to you as you enter your marriage and how to begin your married life yes. uh, together and with each other and with God. 
So we look forward to seeing you in the next in the next course in the units there. Yeah. Uh, there are resources that we'll put in at the end of this to help you look at uh, counseling, mm -hmm. help you look at uh, what covenant means, mm -hmm. what it means to be a Christian mm -hmm. couple, yeah. and and to do that. So uh, much success, much joy to your family. Uh, family Secrets is here for you, and we love sharing our lives with you. Looking forward to seeing you in the next course. Thanks see for you there. joining us. Absolutely.